I can't even pretend to imagine what you're going through right now. I'll be here waiting for you to document it all. I just need you, Dro, to say it. I need you to say it. Welcome everyone to the Queer Network. My name is Justin. And I'm Eddie. And we have some special guests today on the network. Uh, Alex and Corey, huge part of the creation. Well, they co-created and they co-wrote the movie On the Floor. It's a short film that's made its way around the film festival circuit. Um, it's a short film, but it's also like almost like a music video. I, I'm going to let them explain really what it is, but uh, welcome to the network. Thanks for having us. Um, introduce yourselves and and then whoever wants to go for it, explaining on the floor. Um, I'm Corey. Uh, I'm a filmmaker. I live in Brooklyn. Um, Alexander and I have actually known each other for a pretty long time. Um, we went to college together at Virginia Tech, which is where we kind of started making short films. Um, and so this project goes back to, I think, around 2017 when we started writing it, right, Alexander? Yeah, um, in, in 2017. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to talk about maybe a little bit of our influences going into it? Because there is definitely a lot going on. Yeah, um, we had both wrote or both read this book called Great Jones Street by Don Toledo who recently just came out with White Noise, the film, another one of his books. Yeah. But we were kind of inspired by the atmosphere and the setting of that book. Uh, it was about, it's about like a 1970s rock and roll star. And they kind of just divorced themselves from the fame and have a little bit of a mental breakdown and get into all these kind of surreal adventures in like the village in the seventies. And right around that time, that summer, I read a New York Times article about the new kind of burgeoning soundcloud rap scene which people were likening to rock and roll of the 70s and punk of the 80s and i was kind of like wow this this energy feels very new and different because all these young artists were just uploading music for free on soundcloud and it was a really kind of like democratic and vibrant way to share music and art and community and then also like traditionally hip-hop has always been a very kind of masculine space but a lot of these younger artists were embracing femininity and kind of, I don't know if they would describe it as such, but kind of gender queerness, gender non-conforming-ness in their fashion and kind of aesthetic. And then there was one artist in particular named Lil Peep who was doing all of that. And then he came out as openly queer, openly bisexual. And I don't know, I was just kind of struck by that again in the sphere of hip hop as being pretty brave because there aren't a lot, there weren't at the time back in 2017, a lot of queer voices. It's a lot different now. Um, but so yeah, that was kind of the beginnings of that. And it was like, how can we kind of mesh the two and then also kind of talk about our own, just like feelings of going through your twenties and identity and alienation and what it means to kind of constantly evolve yeah, so I think that was kind of like the starting point for it all. Yeah, I think and did go for it. Go for it. Right, I think we both felt as though we were sort of that transitional periods in our life. Not not just through, you know, sexuality and gender, but just kind of everything. And yeah. I, I think it it sort of provided an interesting opportunity to tell a contained coming of age story with this mm -hmm. like weird magical sort of vibe that we found in the SoundCloud rap scene. So, um, Corey, what, what do you identify as? Gay, queer? Um, I, I'm straight, though, oh, you know, okay. to be honest, I've, you know, kind of been, you know, I, I might be bisexual, <laughs> is, basically, is basically the deal. Um, and so, you know, th this film is partially about you know that discovery but moreover it's about the fact you know we sort of started talking you know 
right at the beginning of this interview, right, about how things are way less siloed than they used to be. And so this film was sort of about the fact that noticing in life how things are becoming sort of less siloed and how that's okay and this character yeah. sort of not really knowing what they are necessarily but sort of being mm -hmm. in transition and trying to figure it out why don't we like why don't you tell us what on the floor is about i think it's about um a young musician who's just recently encountered fame for the first time and is dealing with the commercial pressures of that while at the same time going through a transition of who am I and what's my identity? Uh, and do I have to stick to this one kind of thing that's gotten me to this place? Is a lot of this coming from your own experience? Like that you, inf obviously as an actor, you infuse this character with this, but how much as you guys were writing this was it was really, an extension of your own exploration and like where were you at in this journey like are you both musicians where do you where how do you arrive at this character so that was kind of crazy and that was kind of what was extremely exciting and scary about it was i kind of would always wanted to be a musician when i was super little even before i was an actor but i had never done it at all i mean i had like sung growing up but that was it and so it was kind of like all right, it feels like we need to make this movie. And to do that, I should, you know, make music to get into character. And also like Lil Peep tragically passed away and we actually went to his memorial service. And it was very moving because he was, I don't know, 23 or 24 when he passed away. And so many people were there kind of moved and affected by his work. And he was just a very courageous artist. And I was like, well, you know, why? You only have one life. So if I, I've always wanted to make music, I should make music, right? So it, it started as a way kind of getting into character, but then it, it became, you know, its own kind of thing and journey. And I discovered that I had, I did have quite the passion for it. And, and yeah, I ended up doing all the kind of soundtrack for the film and uh, still make music and have gone on to perform shows and such since mm -hmm. the film has wrapped. So that kind of took on a life of its own that I did not expect, which was, which was really cool. Very cool. Corey, do you, what's your relationship to music beyond? Um, I mean, I, I'm a drummer. Um, I'm a musician, mm -hmm. uh, but I just love music. And I think that, yeah. you know, the film was a way to kind of show that the way, you know, we were drawing parallels between sort of this gender fluidity, but also this kind of weird new fluidity in music as well. Um, and in storytelling. Where, right. Like we're using a music video sort of intertwined with a story. Right. And, and it feels like, um, you know, just with the with the um, SoundCloud rap scene, right? There's an integration of a lot of different genres. You know, there's punk, there's hip hop, there's this weird sort of homage to glam rock from the '70s in a weird sort of way. Um, and so, yeah, as you were saying, as we were thinking about these things and kind of like, what is the style of the film going to be as this character kind of isolates himself? We were like, what if it's kind of like he's trapped in a music video, so to speak, mm -hmm. in his own mind, in a way. Yeah. Um, and he kind of has to decide how to proceed from there. Um, Alexander, where were you at in your own journey to your own gender expression at the time? And like, where are you now? And I mean, for sure, only share what you want to share. But the reason, one of the reasons we have the Queer Network is because we want people to hear other people's stories because there's a lot of people that don't even know how to talk about non-binary as a, as, a, as a whole. So to hear these words from someone who actually is living the experience is important. And and some people don't even know what non-binary is. I mean, this is a, some, a, a relatively new um label or 
you know, in the last couple of years. So, yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking about that today. It, it, it's, it was very much the beginning of my journey. And I remember, you know, we were conceiving this character. And like I said, I was kind of inspired by peeps coming out and just being kind of forthright about it. And I remember I was like laying down meditating and I was thinking about the character. And I remember I was just kind of like hit what felt like from somewhere else that this character should be queer. And like you all were speaking to earlier, queer has such a kind of expansive, fluid, dynamic quality to it, where it's like, I can say I'm queer and that allows me to kind of fill in whatever is unique to my own gender and sexuality and, and personality and, and have that truth that like, I know that I'm different from the norm or different from the heteronormative culture, you know, which I always had kind of known, but had never been able to articulate before. Um, and I think what's interesting is like that time period, you know, 2017, 20, it's when we really started to kind of have that lexicon expand. And that was when I started to meet a lot of trans and non-binary people for the first time. Um, but I would say, yeah, the, the experience of filming it and uh, experimenting with my own fashion in like a public way, mm -hmm. very much began my journey. And, you know, the experiencing of, of filming it um, with the two actors and the relationships that I have in the film, obviously as an actor, you know, you're trying to truthfully live that. And yeah, it all felt very intense and real. And so that was, um, that was part of the journey as well. And then I think like right when we wrapped and finally finished the film completely was like February, March, 2020. And, um, so all of that was kind of like right there. And then I think like a lot of people that I know, you know, kind of slowing down and sitting with it all during the pandemic, I kind of had like a, oh wow, I'm like, this is like even way more intense and meaningful than I thought at all. And, and, it, and honestly, I'm like, you know, gender, is such a ongoing journey and a process. And I, I feel like I know so much more than I did now, but um, than I did then, but I'm still like figuring things out. And um, yeah. Can I, I add, can I add to that by just, you know, for everybody that's listening at home, like sexuality, who you have sex with, it's, it's one level and I feel like gender is is another level, like identity and gender. And I think we we really need to understand the nuance of those things because coming out as gay or bi or pansexual or whatever, that is one level and it's not separate, but not the same as I think gender identity because, and it's really so personal, like, and it sounds like you're really still on that journey of exploration, but somewhere along the way and this is what i would love to hear more about the word non-binary like you found that that resonated with you or or using they them pronouns like where what when did that happen for you and and what does that mean to you what does non-binary mean to you so it's it's similar like to me queer non-binary they them pronouns i love um being introduced to somebody with kind of a blank slate uh, that's free from people's preconceptions that society has ingrained in them. So I can kind of um, project my unique self into whatever relationship we end up having. And then, you know, there's just a, there's a, it's a more expansive way of relating to the world in that there's, you know, masculine, feminine, but then it's really so much more of a spectrum and, I think like, you know, you speaking about gender and thinking about the film, like my relationships now with other trans people, with other non-binary people, like it has that feeling almost like the film, not to make it too tied in, but like of 
fluidity and dynamism and expansiveness and like really kind of mind blowing ways at times that feels really exciting. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm just like very proud to be openly queer and non-binary, trans, whatever, um, you know, and I didn't have that level of like public facing uh, awareness when we started all of this at all. And, and what's not, it been like? Go ahead, sorry. Eddie. No, I was just saying, and, and, and not be identified as either gender. Like, is that, is that what you embrace? Yeah, I mean, that's what I, I, I love when, uh, you know, I think a lot of um, cis people still find it kind of hard to wrap their heads around, but it's a really uh, beautiful feeling when people will, you know, people will just see you kind of, not to be cliche, but see you for who you are and, uh, and yeah, have that openness rather than trying to fix you immediately into a preconceived notion of what you might be. Mm -hmm. so so what again I, you know because i always think about the people who are watching and and the people who are maybe struggling with who they are or um, what what message what would you say to them you know it's obviously a, a very difficult time and the recent events and atmosphere uh were really difficult um I think, you know, if anything, it's just made me want to be more unapologetically myself. And it's not, you know, that's not true for everyone in, in, in every moment. And it's a process and you have to kind of go through it on your own. And um, community helps so much, you know, being around other gender non-conforming people and just mm -hmm. people that accept you for that helps give you the strength to kind of be more unapologetically out. Um, and I know for me, just, yeah, like expressing it through my acting and film and, and, and music, uh, you know, gave me the courage to express those things before I could just express them talking to you like this, you know? So that, that helps a lot as well. Um, but, you know, it's tough. Uh, you know, if you can get through difficult moments and stick to who you think you are and, and who you, your vision of yourself might be, and especially with gender. Eventually, you know, in this day and age, you are going to find your community because there's so much more out there now and uh, it's growing every day. So yeah, it's inspiring. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, it's inspiring to hear you at this point, also knowing that I can see it in your face and in your vo and I can hear it in your voice that like this is you living that truth right now in this moment because we we these are these are timestamps these are you know the internet allows everything to be a chronological expression and so we really see the timeline of events and even doing something like this I know as an actor myself the moment I had to just say I'm going to openly be gay. Like that was the first step for me. So that every time somebody asks, they could look online and see the Gay Men channel and they'll just know. Like 10 years ago, that was a lot harder to do because, you know, I still got calls from my agent being like, is he gay or straight? Because they wanted to know. And they're really not allowed to know that. But I'm watching you express this confidently. And I hope that that is what other people see to know that when they feel ready to do it, like there's a whole community of people out there that are waiting to embrace them for exactly who they are. And they don't all have to be non-binary or trans, which is why I wanted to ask Corey, what's it been like to watch this in your dear friend? Oh, it's been beautiful. It, it's been honestly like one of the most like, interesting cool experiences i i've mm -hmm. had with one of my good friends because yeah I would, like when we originated mm -hmm. this project mm -hmm. you know we, we weren't like all right we want to like mm -hmm. tell a story about alexander's gender expression <laughs> right that wasn't that wasn't you know what we said to ourselves but yeah. it it became you know about that in a way and it became so much bigger than just a film 
you know, it became a very deep look at ourselves. And that was right. cool to see. And it sounds like it's actually had some impact on your own expression in the world and how you see yourself. For, for within... sure, for sure. Because the film was very much an opportunity for me to take a look at myself and, mm -hmm. you know, say to myself, okay, do I really feel like I belong in this silo of a straight person? Or do I want to yeah. sort of, you know, tell people that there's, there's a bit more to it than that? I might not know what it is, but there's a bit more to it. That um, is that is it right there, Corey. That there is more, and you don't have to have the answer to what the more is. I hope that that's, that's where I feel like the queer expression includes everyone who wants to be a part of it, no matter what straight, gay, bi, trans, whatever you are, it is that umbrella that accepts everyone on the path of exploration that we're never going to get there, but every day is another day to explore it. For sure. And, and I hope the film relays that message as well. Um, well, that was, that was my question. Um, as a director, what, what do you want people to take away from, from um, On the Floor? That it's okay to be in transition that it's okay to be struggling it's okay to not know things and that mm -hmm. your whole life you're going to be on this journey where you're trying to sort of find that truth in yourself and i i think that society has a way of kind of trying to tell you who you are immediately um and that takes away the whole journey of you know figuring it out um and I think it's okay to be on that journey, figuring it out and not always be at a destination. And, you know, from my own experience, you know, again, being an older gay queer man, I mean, I'm still trying to figure it out. And with what's happening now with this, with, with the way people are expressing themselves, I mean, Justin and I were talking on our podcast, the last one, it's like, like I'm thinking of painting my toenails. Like I would never have dreamed of doing that, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And now I see, like, I just did a yoga class and there was like two guys in the class that had their toenails painted. It's like, oh my God, this is so cool. So even something like that, like even as an older man, like we could still do whatever the hell we want. And we, we were still learning and we're still figuring out how to express ourselves you know, and, and say that it's okay. It's okay to do that, you know? And it just, your point just proves how chained people still are to the binary system, even if they are a part of the queer community or if they're a woke straight person, they're still like chained to this idea that we're only allowed to live in these two lanes. And these they're the simplest of things, shoes, your nails, like, and yet, people may say that clothing is just clothing but it's it's really an extension of an expression of the inside of you if you want it to be if you want to just wear like the basics that's fine but even that is a choice and i think that the younger generation is starting to show us that like they don't even need labels because that's sort of irrelevant to them they just want to be themselves we're just about out of time here. So I I kind of like if with either of you have sort of a final thing that you would like to say that that we haven't said, um, feel free. And if not, that's okay too, because I think we said a lot. I guess you could also ask like what what's this has gone on to some film festivals and you've had some success with it. Um, are y'all working on a new project? Like Alexander, you're more of an actor musician or do you direct things too? And Corey, you're more of a director or do you guys cross over into all the lanes? It's like, what's next? What have you been up to? Um, I'm working on a couple scripts, you know, cool. a couple, a couple shorts, you know, a couple you know, a feature that's way too long that needs to be trimmed down, you know, that sort of thing. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the two of us like to write together. So we do have one one kind of short that we were we were tinkering with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
Alexander, what are you up to? Yeah, I, uh, I've been mostly focusing on acting in the last year, doing, you know, a couple TV shows, films and things. Uh, um, and yeah, I've, I've like worked on and directed my own music videos and I would like to direct my own short at some point. Um, and yeah, also just wanting to work with more like queer indie filmmakers, you know, and just make more connections and relationships um, and kind of see where things go with that. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, that's what I would say. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Love that. Well, thank you so much for sharing this time with us and with our audience. Um, you know, these short films are very powerful and and yet because they're short, they sometimes need some more explanation or just a, a little bit of a diving board to give people some context. Um, you obviously can take so much from just the short film itself, but these conversations, I think just, they humanize it a little bit more. They give a little more depth to, to whatever was it being expressed on screen. So thank you so much for giving us your time. And the message, the message is so powerful. And um, yes. I think that really came across today. So um, thank you for that. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for having us. It was a very moving conversation and I enjoyed it a lot. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Everybody watching at home, subscribe, like. We'll see you next week or next time. The podcast will be next week. So we'll see you then. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.